Hello, my name is Staff Sergeant Thomas. I'm an instructor here at Fort Lee, Virginia with the Tactical Support Equipment Department, Power Generation Division. Today, we'll be going over the crank circuit, which is one of six circuits associated with the 60KW TQG. The crank circuit. The purpose of the crank circuit is to allow the engine starter to engage the flywheel for motion. It is the same in all generators. The major components are the components associated with the 60KW Tactical Quiet Generator. They are as follows. The K21 Governor Control Power. The A5 Electronic Governor. The K15 Start Relay. The K2 Crank Relay. The L4 Starter Solenoid and the B1 Starter Motor. The common components are the components that are shared with various types of tactical quiet generators. They are as follows. The MT4 shunt resistor, the CR1, CR4, and CR7 diodes, the S17 emergency stop switch, the S10 dead crank switch, the S1 switch, the K12 contacts, the S7 battle short switch, and finally, the CB1 DC control. This is a wiring schematic, which is an overview of the circuitry and components in a 60KW TQG. Right now, we will identify the location of the components on the wiring schematic. The S1, the K21, the Alpha 5 and S14, the K15 and CR7, the K2, the L4 and B1, the MT4, the CB1, S17 and CR1, the S10, the S7, K12 contacts, and the CR4. The first step in the crank circuit will be illuminated in red so that you can follow the path through the wiring schematic. The first thing we are going to do is place our S10 dead crank switch from off to normal and turn our S1 master switch from the off to start position. The purpose of the K21 electronic governor control relay is to provide operational voltage to our Alpha 5 electronic governor. We are going to start by leaving the negative side of the battery following our negative web towards our K21 electronic governor control relay coil. From here, we will enter Bravo and leave out of Alpha through the CR4 diode, headed towards the S1 master switch terminal 7 and leave out of our S1 terminal 3. After we leave the S1 master switch pin 3, we will be grooming the return path for the rest of our circuits. Once we leave the S13, we will work our way back towards the positive side of the battery. We will go through the CB1 DC control circuit breaker, the S17 emergency stop switch, the CR1 diode, the S10 dead crank switch, going to our MT4 shunt resistor terminal 1 and out terminal 4 heading towards the positive side of the battery. Our K21 is now energized. Now that our K21 electronic governor control relay is energized, our contacts will now reverse, opening normally closed contacts and closing normally open contacts. This allows input power to our Alpha 5 electronic governor. We will pick up potential from the CB ground, going towards our Alpha 5 electronic governor pin 4 and leaving out of pin 3 towards the positive side of the battery. With the Alpha 5 electronic governor control having 24 volts DC, the S14 crank disconnect switch contacts now reverse. Our next step is to energize the K15 start relay. Its contacts are used in order for the K2 crank relay to be energized which allows the L4 starter solenoid and B1 starter motor to engage the flywheel. This path will be illuminated in blue on the wire schematic. We are going to pick up potential from the negative web heading towards our K15 start relay, 
through our CR7 inline diode. We will enter through the K15 pin Bravo and leave out of the K15 pin Alpha. Once we reach this point, we will now follow the common path to the positive side of the battery which was established by the K21 electronic governor control relay. At this point, our K15 start relay is now energized and its contacts have reversed allowing a path for the K2 crank relay. Now we are going to energize the K2, the L4, and B1. This path will be illuminated in pink. We will begin from the negative web headed towards our K2 crank relay coil going in the X2 and out of the X1 going through the reverse K15 start relay contacts headed back towards the positive side of the battery. At this point our K2 crank relay is now energized and its contacts Alpha 1 and Alpha 2 slam shut. This will allow our L4 starter solenoid path to be established. The last step we need to do in the crank circuit is to energize the L4 starter solenoid and the B1 starter motor. Our L4 goes through the K2 crank relay contact towards the positive side of the battery. Once there internally it closes this contact which allows the B1 starter motor to energize. At this point our generator is now cranking. 